Hey, I want to show you something. Let's take a little trip off of Earth and park our spacecraft somewhere near the moon. We're now almost 240,000 miles away from our home planet. That's almost 100 times the width of the United States. Now we've brought a special set of tools with us, a giant hammer and an enormous chisel. Place the chisel at the Earth's north pole and strike its head with the hammer. The Earth cracks open like an eggshell and we see another planet. This is Theia, and it's hiding inside our planet like a yolk in an egg. If you want to find out how it got there, you'd need to travel back in time 4.5 billion years. This beautiful nebula is what will eventually become our solar system. Colored dust and various space debris are slowly coming closer toward the common center. Over time, this jigsaw puzzle of debris becomes denser and heavier. The temperature inside the giant is rising. Soon, it gets so high that it'll trigger a nuclear chain reaction. One more second, and bam! There's an explosion so powerful that the shockwaves travel far into deep space. When the dust clears a little, you can see that a bright light is still shining at the very center of the explosion. This newborn star is the Sun. It weighs as much as 333,000 Earths. If the Sun was a bucket, you'd need 1.3 million Earth-sized planets to fill it. But we're interested in that small object over there, 93 million miles away from the Sun. This pile of rocks and hot lava is Earth. Right now, the planet is busy forming its core while the oceans of lava are gradually cooling down. But some millions of years later, after the Sun's birth, you notice another small object. Here comes Theia. This small planet was formed at about the same time as Earth, and right now, it's following a crazy spiral trajectory at enormous speed. Scientists believe Theia was like a ball Jupiter and Venus played around with. Venus would pull Theia in one direction, and then Jupiter would pull it right back. But what makes up 99.8% of the mass of the solar system is the Sun. It's what makes Theia move into almost the same orbit as Earth. So they inevitably come closer and closer to each other until they become next door neighbors. We see that Theia is roughly the size of Mars, as wide as the Atlantic Ocean from New York to Portugal. At this point, the collision can't be avoided. Theia is traveling towards Earth at nearly 9,000 miles per hour. That's 11 times faster than the speed of sound. If this smaller planet would crash into Earth at a particular angle, Earth would most likely be torn apart, as well as Theia itself. The collision would cause a huge blast visible on other planets, even on a bright day. Nothing would be left but some burning dust and debris. Even if Theia only slightly grazes the Earth, it'll still knock out a sizable chunk. But the collision with Theia happens at a perfect 45 degree angle. It strikes the Earth at tremendous speed. The explosion literally vaporizes huge amounts of rock, and the shockwave sends the remaining debris into Earth's orbit. A huge crater is formed at the impact site, which soon gets filled in with boiling lava. The remnants of Theia and the ejected fragments of Earth begin to orbit our planet. According to one theory, these fragments actually form two moons. At first, they travel together, but one day they get too close to each other and collide, forming one large space body. The other theory claims that all the loose shards get pulled in by the remnants of Theia, and that sometime after that, they form the moon, as we know it today. At this point in the past, though, it's just red hot rock and lava. The collision at this angle slightly tilts our planet and accelerates its rotation. It's because of Theia that we have different seasons and 24 hours in a day. Now, Earth also has these things called lithospheric plates. These are enormous solid land masses that make up the crust of our planet. After the collision with Theia, they start to break and crack. It causes carbon, a primary component of all known life on Earth, to start moving all over our planet. So Earth gains a kind of uh, metabolism. After a few hundred million years, the first living creatures start to appear on our planet. Over the next nearly 4 billion years, simple single-cell organisms evolve into the kinds of complex life you see today. According to scientists, a collision like we had with Theia is a very rare event. The probability that somewhere out there there's a planet like ours that has survived the same catastrophe is even rarer still. This may be the reason why we have yet to find other traces of other civilizations out there in space. Meanwhile, 
the remains of Theia are still here on Earth. Of course, it doesn't look like an actual entire planet stuck inside our own. Most of the fragments have melted and blended into the Earth's crust. If you take the top layer off our planet, you'll see two huge lava blobs the size of large continents. They're right below Africa and the Pacific Ocean. Presumably, these are the remains of Theia. They didn't mix with the Earth's mantle because of different densities. It's like mixing water and oil in a glass. The oil will always float up over the water and create an even layer on top of it. But if you raise these lava patches up to the surface, they'd be a hundred times higher than Mount Everest. Other remains of Theia might be on the moon. The Apollo space missions brought back many soil samples for analysis, which led scientists to conclude that the moon is very similar to the Earth in structure. Someday in the future, people could drill deep down and take samples of the moon's crust. Then they'd analyze the blobs from Earth, and if their structure matched, it would be undeniable proof that Theia did hit Earth 4.5 billion years ago and gave us the moon. But for the time being, Theia remains an unsolved mystery. Scientists are still not sure that the planet actually existed. The whole idea does perfectly fit the model of the moon's creation, but it's also possible that this incredible collision may have never happened. Now, let's travel 41 light years away from Earth to the planet 55 Cancri E. It's about twice the size of Earth and eight times heavier. Let's take out our giant hammer again and use it to hit the chisel. The planet cracks and you see it's a giant diamond. The temperature on this planet is tens of times higher than on Earth and its soil is rich in carbon. The heat puts a lot of pressure on this carbon and the structure changes. First, it turns into graphite, but then add just a bit more pressure and the graphite turns to diamond. On Earth, diamonds form at depths 60 miles below sea level, where the pressure is 50,000 times greater than that on the surface. And the temperature there averages over 1,000 degrees, which is as hot as fire. Diamonds are often ejected closer to the surface in volcanic eruptions, but still, people mostly have to dig mines 1,500 feet deep to find these beautiful gems. Currently, the Golden Jubilee Diamond is the biggest cut and faceted diamond on Earth. It weighs as much as a chocolate bar and is the size of a hamster. Its price is about $12 million. Now, imagine a diamond the size of an entire planet! Now, let's fly back to our solar system. Our destination now is Jupiter's moon Europa. It's as wide as the distance between Seattle and Houston. And its mass is less than 1% of the mass of Earth. Its surface is enclosed in an icy crust that's about 19 miles thick. Europa is completely covered in water. It's freezing here, three times colder than that of the North Pole and Earth. The water turns to ice almost instantly. But the ocean beneath the surface is still liquid. Europa has a gravitational relationship with Jupiter, just like the Moon with the Earth. This creates tidal forces that heat Europa's core, which then melts the ice around it. The result is a huge ocean, two or three times larger than that of Earth's oceans combined. Scientists believe that water is one of the essential ingredients for life. This means that life may exist on Europa. There could be thermal springs, just like at the bottom of our oceans, though the water there is probably much warmer. And even though the pressure and temperature in such places are likely to be extreme, simple bacteria could live there. Europa is almost the same age as Earth, so there has been enough time for living organisms to appear and evolve. Who knows, maybe some advanced civilization is already blooming under this crust of ice. They might be building big cities and dreaming of conquering space. But for now, all we can do is speculate and maybe someday send the probe to Europa to find out if life is possible there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.